Located off the coast of mainland Portugal, Madeira is a stunning island that was first discovered in the early 15th century. An island brimming with culture and beautiful locations, it's an incredibly popular destination among tourists with a wide range of interests. In this video, I will show you the best areas to stay in Madeira. We begin in the capital and most populous city on the island, Funchal, which is also our only destination not situated on the coast. The historic center of the island, the city was first settled in the early 15th century, and was named after the Portuguese word for fennel, funcho, which grew in abundance in the area. As such, it is filled with historic buildings and sites, as well as more than 17 museums, which are sure to keep the history buffs occupied for a week or two. Located just to the southwest of the city of Funchal, but still in the Funchal municipality, São Martinho makes up the coastal part of the city's metropolitan area. While popular for many of the same reasons as Funchal, such as its range of bars, restaurants, shops and hotels, there are two main attractions here that draw the visitors in. A short way west along the coast of Madeira brings us to our next destination, Camara de Lobos. Believed to be the location the first visitors to the island landed on, its name translates to Sea Lion Chamber, due to the quantity of them they discovered in the area. We move now to Ribera Brava, a destination that gained its name from the river that once flowed through the hills, which translates to Angry or Wild River. A small, seaside town, this is an ideal location for anyone searching for a chilled out, relaxing destination. The region of Ponta do Sol has a name that literally translates to Sun Point, due to being the part of the island that traditionally receives the most sun throughout a year. While that may seem ideal for anyone after a beach vacation, particularly outside of the height of summer, you may want to hold on for a second. Our next destination of Cauheta or Estrito da Cauheta is remarkably similar to Ponta do Sol in a number of ways, which is perhaps unsurprising, given how close the two destinations are to one another. That said, there are two major differences that separate the two locations. We're now going to leave the south coast of the island and head to the very northwestern point of Madeira, which is Porto Moniz. A relatively small settlement, it has gained quite a following over the years for its natural pools. Lava has formed craters that have filled with seawater, making for a unique experience of being able to swim and relax in the crystal clear waters without having to worry about depth or the tide. As we begin to move east along the north coast, we come to the town of São Vicente. Despite being a coastal town, like most of the ones we have looked at before, what's on offer in São Vicente is vastly different to the other destinations. We now move some distance along the coast, to the northeastern part of the island and the town of Santana. Much like our previous destination, the main draw of this location is the history on offer. That said, when compared to São Vicente, the sites on offer are both more targeted towards tourists as well as greater in number. Next, we move to Machico, at the very northeastern tip of the island. Among all of the destinations on Madeira, this is potentially one of the more high-end, even featuring one of its premier golf clubs. The area features the third largest population on the island and has many tourist bars, hotels and restaurants, so you will comfortably be able to find a vibrant experience waiting for you, if that's what you're after. Our penultimate destination of Santa Cruz is located on the eastern coast. One of the most populous towns on Madeira, it has traditionally been a farming and fishing town, like many on the island. Our next destination of Porto Santo may seem a little strange, as it isn't actually located on Madeira. Instead, it is a small island just off its coast. The reason I'm including it is to provide an out-of-the-box type of choice for you, as well as because it's a popular excursion for people staying on Madeira. With daily flights and ferries to the island, it makes for one of the longer, more unique options available. Located on the eastern coast of Madeira, Jardim do Mar is a quaint village. Traditional red and white houses are surrounded by colorful plants and hanging baskets and gardens, with a mosaic-covered promenade completing its picturesque appeal. Canical is a small village on the east side of Madeira that is said to be the oldest on the entire island. A location that hasn't embraced tourism, it is the perfect place to get an authentic experience of the region. Located on the southeast coast of Madeira, Canico is your stereotypical Mediterranean resort town, only with fewer crowds. Beautiful beaches are surrounded by hotels, shops, bars and restaurants, providing all the convenience you could want, without getting too overcrowded. Madeira is a fabulous destination that has something to offer for travelers from all walks of life. While the attractions can vary from place to place, if you know exactly what you are looking for, you are almost guaranteed to be able to find it here.